Welcome to another amazing episode of the Conscious Relationship on Coupling and Parenting Summit. It's me, Lucia Gabriela, your host and producer of today's episode. And today we have an amazing couple, one of my favorite uh, individuals that I have worked with personally. And um, when they were here in Florida, we had such a great time together. Yeah, it's like we connected. They're amazing. They're very humble, amazing, beautiful people. So let me introduce you to them first and read you their bio. So Michael and Freya are our secret passionate partnership. Well grounded in the healing art and are the co-founder of Inanna Sanctuary, a healing retreat center located in the beautiful Costa Rica. That's where they are right now. They are known in their circles for seeing beyond the constraints of society, traditional belief around healing and sexuality, and taking a more holistic and open view, both in their own life path and in their work with others. Michael and Freya are powerfully matched catalysts for growth, showing up as teachers, coaches, and healers with their unique brand of intuition, connection, experience, and talent. Freya's 20 plus years of training and experience as a Richter nurse and midwife have given her a deep connection with women and how to engage with them, fully in the process of stepping into their power. Michael had brought a unique perspective in his studies and research over the last 12 years into human sexuality, past and present, and how the history of sexuality relates to religion and cultural norms. Their discovery of integrative orgasmic healing was the missing link to combining their gift in a way that expresses their passion for creating healing at a deep level and shifting society's thinking around healthy sexuality and relationship. Together, they create deep transformational healing and freedom within strong, motivated women and men by helping them release leftover shame and trauma so they can access their full power. You can find them at www.inanocentuary.com. Welcome! Hello. Yeah, it's, it's such an honor to have you guys again in, um, here in, in, interacting again. You guys have been interviewed before in my uh, Lucia Gabriela TV show on YouTube. And you always guys give so much uh, great insight and goodness to our community. and. And I love you. I thank you for saying yes to this uh, summit and sharing more of your wisdom and knowledge with our community. So, so before we dive into the topic, what do you, um, how do you guys start it in this journey for an audience that they don't know you yet? Our journey has been a really, really interesting one, getting into relationships and sexuality because. I come from a very repressive patriarchal religious organization where I uh, was in that relationship for 28 years uh, being given in a an arranged marriage at the age of 15 to a man 10 years older than myself as his second wife and it created a situation where really my needs weren't being met and the general belief was that women's feelings did not matter uh, their needs did not matter and uh, I was incredibly unhappy and telling myself that I had to just do whatever I was told because that's what we were taught women were supposed to be uh, subservient to the men in the community and obedient to their husbands and and it was much different than a conscious choice of relationship like polyamory because it was more coerced where, where women were taught that if you don't polygamy as a relationship then you'll go to hell so it was very repressive um, as I said I was there for 28 years and I had 12 children in that community and then I finally um, realized through some experiences and through a life improvement training that Michael and I both attended separately but then we met there uh, that 
all that was keeping me trapped was my beliefs that there was any truth in all of that and there was any truth in the religion or the patriarchal organization and so I finally had the courage to leave and um, really create my own life in a conscious way and and um, I met Michael and I really focused on in my journal writing down exactly the kind of relationship that I deserve to create in my life that I do deserve to draw in and how that would feel and two weeks later he asked me out and it's been a crazy amazing journey and an exploration of um, relationships and sexuality and working with so many you know we have ourselves experience you know myself polygamy to start with and then monogamy with Michael and then we chose to include another man in our relationship and so we've experienced polyamory and we've learned a lot about what works and what doesn't work we currently are not in a polyamorous relationship because to me integrity and trust are everything that didn't work out and um, I'm not I'm not willing to settle nor should anyone be I must be able to trust who I'm in relationship with so and I had a, a similar upbringing with um, although not polygamist I was I was also in the Mormon religion uh, um, more, more uh, conventional Mormon religion if you will and um, so I was raised uh, in Florida in the south um, in the 60s and 70s and um, in a in a, a very all-encompassing religion Mormon religion and I got to learn all about guilt and blame and got to or I learned to accept early on that um, I didn't really have a direct connection with divinity. I had to go through an intermediary and I had to become, through my actions, become worthy of it. And um, I, you know, as I went through my process and I went on my path, I got to learn that that, that wasn't the case and, uh, and get more in touch with myself and my authenticity and, and with a direct connection to source. And meeting Freya was an amazing experience for for us um, to uh, grow together in that program. It was a very uh, spiritually oriented program, and we got to grow together and uh, and court while we were going through that program. At that point to um, to where we are now we got to include this new modality which was very transformational for us yes. because it, it, it's an issue of um, of of just knowing about it and it became something that became a, uh, a cellular level experience yes and we've done a lot of healing work before we stepped into doing our modality and just so much work and it was really really actually surprising to us how much there still was left that we had mm -hmm. to heal and this process has been completely transformational for us too and our clients it's like every session is beautiful completely transformational and it's a miracle we we so love we have the best job on the planet Seriously. We walked out of our sessions with our clients in awe. Mm -hmm. And, and one, what we find when we deal with people in a healing environment, uh, have such a vulnerable healing environment, is, is that we get to see right into who they are, right into their soul. Yeah. And, and that, what you feel for somebody like that in that space is pure love, pure, unconditional love. And it's, and it's a wonderful thing to experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I had been, uh, I have experienced their work, so it, I can say that it is beautiful and, and it's empowering. And, and actually, one of the sessions that I have with them, I actually, it clicked something that it didn't click before, that it was mm -hmm. there, but not there yet. And mm -hmm. even though I do the sexual healing work myself, like that's why I would share with everyone, right? 
you know, you, you coaches need coaches, healers need healers. You know, you always need amazing people in your life to Absolutely. hold the container to yes. help you grow yeah. and, and, and transform and evolve because, yeah, there are things that as individuals we don't see ourselves, like but other people who could see it. Yes. And sometimes, and especially with the work that uh, Freya and Michael do is, is that when I was laying on that table, you know, I have done my body work and, you know, my, my, there are, you know, the energy of somebody else and holding the container. That's why I love the, the couple, the couple work. Because mm -hmm. it's different when we do a one on one, like somebody there, the healer work. But it was beautiful to, to, to have the container of two people holding the space, but also the energy combined. And, and there was part of the body that needed to awaken that it wouldn't have awakened just by myself. Like, because for some reason, the energy needed to be present where there was the, the whole the container of, of that whole experience. So I can say that, you know, it, it's, it's beautiful the work that, that you guys do and the sacred space that you guys hold for your client. It, it's powerful, it's empowering, and, and yeah, I love it, I love it. But anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, we are excited to learn from you today. We're excited mm -hmm. to hear more goodness, more juiciness, and, uh, and, and practical things that we can bring into our lives. So, we're going to go into the presentation with Freya and Michael. And after they come back, we're going to go with question and answer. We're going to share some insight uh, and have a nice conversation. And then we wrap it up. So we'll see you in a little bit. And Michael and Freya, here you are, guys. We can share your presentation. We're so excited to, to present, um, to give a presentation, especially for this conference. It's um, what an amazing group of people that uh, mm -hmm. Gabrielle has brought together. And our particular topic is one that's near and dear to us. Um, we call it up-leveling your intimacy. We're navigating the, the buffet of relationship structures consciously and deliciously. Yes, because relationships should be fun. Yeah, right? Yes, absolutely. We all tend to believe that we know what a relationship should look like, and we usually base this belief first on the structure we grew up in, for good or bad. That structure for another, embrace it as an ideal, or just muddle through in a state of perpetual confusion. The reality is there are few things as common and as at the same time as misunderstood as committed intimate relationships. There are so many more possibilities than people have been led to believe. And so we've put this together in uh, five steps to creating the most authentic, intimate, juicy relationship possible because relationships should be intimate and juicy and, and this will, amazing, and fun. Then, yes, and this will get you started. This, this, this gets, these are some of the most important steps to, to creating that which you deserve. You deserve yes. that perfect relationship. You, you deserve the excitement, the joy, and the connection, the deep, intimate connection. And so we're going to start out with uh, step, well, step one is, Release all that you are not and heal your past so you can authentically discover who you are now and what works for you. So you get to learn how to trust yourself. Yes, and this is so important because one of the things we see in life and in people we know and in our work is that we all carry forward into our current relationships trauma that has happened to us in our past, in our past relationships, even as children. And so that doesn't serve us, and it doesn't serve the person that we're in relationship with, and doesn't allow us to really authentically engage in that relationship when we're coming from our pain. Right. And too many people rebel just for the sake of rebelling. They decide that they're, they're done with what they've been doing, and so they say, I'm, gonna, I'm going to be authentic. And, to, and, and they mistake being authentic for being in opposition. And rebelling for the sake of rebelling is still playing by their rules. All you're doing is you're, you're, you're taking what they're saying and you're doing the opposite. Yeah, so it's actually not making a choice for your own highest good. You're still allowing those people who dictated how you live life, how you live your relationships, 
and they're still in control. You're just doing the opposite of what they and said. And you're not being your authentic self. Yeah. Um, this is so incredibly important, and we find this all the time in our work, where people are wondering, why am I drawing in the same kind of partner over and over and over again, and it's just not working? And it's actually because they aren't showing up authentically as who they are because they're hiding. They're hiding behind all the masks and the walls that they've created in their lives because of their past experiences and their pain. And this is why it's so incredibly important to heal all of that and to release all the beliefs that aren't working for you and that are holding you back so that you can show up authentically as who you are so that person can see you. Yes. And this isn't like a, a destination that you arrive at one day and you're done. You, um, getting in touch with who you are, your authentic self, your, your, your most deepest um, sense of self, is a continual process. Mm -hmm. And as, you, as it gets revealed to you and as you're true to it, more gets revealed. Mm -hmm. You get more and more in touch and, and, and falling back in love again with who you are on a deep level. And so this is definitely a lifelong process, but it's a beautiful process. It's, it's, it, is, it is one that's going to give you the most uh, results, the most um, satisfaction out of life. And that's why we put it first. Because mm -hmm. the very idea that you can continue to go through life not knowing who you are is... Is, is, is nonsense, it's ridiculous. How can you? How can you get anywhere if you don't know who you are and what you want? Yes. You're, you're playing by somebody else's script. You're playing by somebody else's game. So here's a tool Michael just brought up, knowing what you want. Um, but here's a tool for people who are looking to find that perfect relationship, create that perfect relationship. It's really, really great to be aware of what you don't want to create. And if you are focusing on what you don't want, that's exactly what you'll draw back into your life. So being very, very clear on what you do want, the kind of relationship you do deserve, and focusing on that. So here's the tool. Journal exactly what you want in a partner, in a partnership, in a relationship, and how that feels. That's a very important part of it, how that feels. Maybe even take um, a day in the life of you in this relationship with this partnership and wake up in the morning and start from there and describe what your experience is like and, and what your interactions are like and how your day goes in this relationship and with this, with this person. How it, literally how it feels, how it tastes, how it smells on a deep cellular level and get in mm -hmm. touch with that. Yes, beautiful. Number two, our second point, engage in powerful, authentic communication. No assumptions. Stop playing the right-wrong game. Use working and not working. Instead, yes. So. Yes. Um, Too many people must be right. And, and, yeah, maybe they'll end up being right, but they'll often end up being alone. It, it, isn't, it doesn't work to say right and wrong in a relationship. What works best is working, not working. Yeah. This doesn't work for me or this does work for me. Yeah, and that takes the negative energy out of it. When you're making your partner wrong, that's a really negative energy, and they're going to be resistant. And so if you bring in a way of communicating really authentically, you want to communicate honestly and you know, saying, like, when this happens, this is how it makes me feel, and you know, or this particular way of doing something is not working for me. Can we um, think of something or create something that works for both of us? It it just creates something much higher energy, and um, yeah, it completely shifts it because now yeah. instead of being in a place where basically um, if you're going to be viewed as attacking your partner. You just tell them, look, you know, whatever like the right or wrong of it, it doesn't work for me. And of course, our relationship must work for both of us. So, what can we create together that works for me, that also works for you? Yes. And take a look at your assumptions 
Everybody thinks they know. Even in a, in a, say in a monogamous relationship. That, That's the big one. Monogamous yeah. relationships. People often don't talk about they how just, the relationship's going to work. They just yeah. assume that there's this set of rules that the other person is going to abide by. And, and everybody knows what those rules are. And, and yeah, they are actually pretty well embedded in our society. But people are different. People interpret things different. And make, living in assumptions like that leaves you open, leaves you wide open for miscommunications, for misunderstandings, and mm -hmm. for pain. Well, and the, the greatest underlying cause for relationships that don't work out for divorce rate is unmet expectations. So if, if you're not making assumptions and not having expectations that you haven't talked about and discussed, and negotiated, then that takes that out of the equation. Yes, and every relationship is completely unique, no matter mm -hmm. what structure you choose to operate under, because the people involved are always unique. And so understanding that and releasing the ideas. How many, how many marriages have failed due to unmet expectations where, the, where both partners never discussed what those expectations were? Yes. So communication is key. Yes. And we, what we have noticed is that people who are involved in polyamorous type of relationships tend to be a lot better about this kind of negotiation and, and really talking about things and communicating and um, creating uh, guidelines for the relationship and maybe even renegotiating. But even in polyamorous relationships, if people don't communicate and they don't renegotiate when something is not working, it creates a breakdown of trust in the relationship. Mm -hmm. So communication is the key to trust. Honest communication is the key to trust. Yeah, and be ruthless about it. You know, analyze together every assumption. Don't, don't assume they know what you're assuming. <laughs> Yeah, don't assume that just because the woman in the relationship is the woman that she's going to necessarily cook all the meals and clean the house. Right. <laughs> On every level, particularly important when you're beginning a relationship. Yes. Every, everything gets to be looked at. And, and talk about the hard stuff from a place of acceptance. Be open. Yes, yes. encourage each other to be open. Create that safe space for the other person in the relationship to really be honest and hold that space of unconditional love. Because the meaning of true intimacy is into me you see. Yeah. And so there can't be walls, there can't be masks, or it's going to break down. Right. And when you're able to be completely authentic and be yourself with your partner, that's a space where you can grow, learn, and expand. Yes. That's such an important thing. And uh, ultimately, that's what we all seek. Yeah. And that brings something up for me here. When we're growing and learning and expanding, and we're talking about conscious relationships, sometimes people grow and learn and expand in different directions. And it's really important to see a relationship not as a failure if it doesn't continue on, but as a learning experience, and those people gave and learned from each other and to each other, and you can choose consciously to separate and have that be still a wonderful experience. Right. A successful relationship isn't an endurance contest. Exactly. You know, it's not to see who blinks first. It's to it's to it's to be in a space of growing where you can be your, your authentic self and where you can support each other. Because in, a, in an intimate relationship, that's where you can get your greatest growth. Yes, and that's actually the purpose of relationships, is to, um, it's, like, it's like you're a catalyst uh, for the growth of the other person. We're right. together supporting each other. And it creates even faster, more exponential rates of growth together. And if you're in, with some, if you're in a relationship with somebody and they don't want this, if they don't want to know who you are, you don't want to explore your assumptions and just insist on chain on communication. It's time to take a look at that. That's a big red flag because somebody's in love with you. They want to know who you are. 
Yes. If they don't want to know who you are, they're in love with a construct in their own heads. And nobody ever meets the uh, expectations of a construct. Mm -hmm. Constructs aren't real. They're, they're yeah. idealized uh, and shallow and um, unchanging. The other part of that is that they actually aren't accessible to you. Like who you see as their potential is, that's all you're going to get is their potential. Yes. And um, there is a universal truth in two people in a relationship. If one is operating at a higher level of vibration than the other, the lowest vote always wins. Mm -hmm. And if the other person in the relationship is not willing to do the work, and create the healing and the learning, you can't force them. In fact, who are you to interfere with their free will choice to walk on the path they're choosing to walk? Right, you have no right. Yeah. And truly, the bottom line is you're not looking for someone whose potential is all you will ever see. Yes. You want to be their cheerleader. You want to... You want to be excited with their growth as, as they are excited with yours. And for heaven's sake, don't take on a major overhaul project. Everybody is a self-improvement project, but you cannot heal someone, you cannot create growth in someone when they have no interest in creating growth in themselves. It has yes. to come from within. And you can, you can support them, you can cheer, you can be their cheerleader, you can cheer them on, you, you can give them all kinds of of advantages of an intimate, intimate relationship, but you cannot create it. Yeah, you can't do it for them. Yeah. So actually, yeah, actions speak louder than words. Yes. And uh, number three, point number three, create your own rules and set those and maintain those healthy boundaries. Never settle. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so important in creating healthy and meaningful intimate relationships and this again goes back to our, our first step of knowing who you are and, and what you want and what you want and then from that space and uh and in partnership with with a uh, with somebody that you can authentically communicate with you can create your perfect rules yes and so here's another tool three steps to uh, maintain setting and maintaining healthy boundaries Step one, get really clear on what your rules are. Yeah. So know what your rules are. Again, no assumptions. Assumptions. And uh, just really, really get clear. Go deep. Meditate on it. Really find out what is important to you. Find, you know, really go through what are the deal breakers in a relationship for you. Yeah, yeah. And share it. What is non negotiable? Because yeah, it's really not fair. For you to have a deal deal breaker you haven't shared. Yeah. You know, assumptions like that are not fair to the other partner, and they, they're they're not going to facilitate facilitate a meaningful relationship. Yes. And then step two is when one partner breaks a rule, you, it gets it gets brought up, it gets brought into the light of day, and it gets discussed. Yeah. State it clearly. And, you know, maybe it's something that you hadn't really talked about before, but, you know, in that moment, state that rule clearly. Yeah. And you can so use all of these in all your relationships, all your family relationships, in your work relationships, all of it. It's mm -hmm. useful for every relationship. Yeah, these are basically just all about boundaries. Yes. Step three, if they still choose not to follow your rule, clearly state that you are choosing to discontinue, discontinue communication with them until they agree to abide by your rules. These are the deal breakers. Yes. These are the deal breakers. And if you're not willing to take this step, if you're not willing to withdraw from a situation that does not work for you, you don't have boundaries. Yeah. And, and you communicate that quickly to your partner when you're not willing to honor your own boundaries. Yeah. And you teach them how to treat you. Yeah. Yes. And that, that will create not only a healthy relationship, it'll create respect. People will respect you. They, they know yeah. that you're not a pushover, you're not a doormat, that uh, you respect yourself enough to yeah. maintain your healthy boundaries.
And here are the things that are going to come up when you've been in relationship with people, whether it's family or your partner, and you have not held those boundaries. You have not communicated those healthy boundaries. And then you decide, okay, I care for myself enough that I am going to start setting some boundaries. You're going to get some resistance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. And it's going to continue for a while until you hold those boundaries in place. And by consistently holding those boundaries, those healthy boundaries in place, then eventually that will become a part of your energetic field and people will sense it and you won't even then have to state those boundaries. They will feel it yeah. and they will not cross that line. And so we talked about the right wrong game. Yeah. And so then that's when you go, um, you, when your partner or someone else in a relationship will say, well, you said this. Or you've changed. You've changed. Ooh, the bad, the, the, the accusation of accusations. You've changed. Uh -huh. well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's I the mean, purpose you of life. Change, you grow. <laughs> you grow and change. It's the purpose of the relationship. Yes. People are not static. Relationships, as we said, are the catalyst for change. And the only failed relationship is one where change is shut down. Yes. Where change does not occur. Yeah, where you're holding the other person to an agreement that was made from the energy of stasis. Stasis is death. Mm -hmm. You can't stay in the same place. You're either going backwards or you're decaying. So, yeah. And this is not a justification for lack of integrity or for violating agreements. This is, you know, when an agreement that you made previously does not work for you, that is the time for that honest communication to come back around and renegotiate. Right. Sometimes the rules that we discussed earlier, sometimes they change. Mm -hmm. It gets to be renegotiated together, though. One person doesn't get to unilaterally change and, and not even notify the other. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, when, the, yes. when, you, when, that, when you sense something like that going on, it's time to sit down, communicate, renegotiate. Mm -hmm. And it's not about giving in. It's not about selling out on yourself. It's about reevaluating what your most basic needs and desires are and who you are on a, on a deep level. Yes. And you may find that that original agreement no longer applies to you either. Mm -hmm. That is no longer an issue for you. So it's again about honest communication and renegotiating being an in integrity. Right. And so no blaming or shaming. It, it, you know, this is open. This is, this is uh, honest and this is authentic. Yes. So that brings us to point number four. Release the need for the approval of others in and outside of your relationship and stop buying into the need to fit into a label. Right. Labels are useful. They, they give you a starting point. You may, you may decide that the um, label of monogamy doesn't work for you, but polyamory does. Well, that's great. But what polyamory means for one person means completely different for another person. And, mm -hmm. Which, frankly, even in monogamy, person means completely different for another person. So it, accept it as a starting point and then go exploring on what that means for you as an authentic, real person. And don't feel like you have to fit in that label in any way, like as it's identified, because there are probably as many forms of relationships in even as many forms as polyamory and as there are in this world and right. even forms of sexual identities, you can't just fit into one label and fit. And that's where people run into a lot of self-judgment when they're trying to fit themselves into a label. Or misunderstanding. Or misunderstanding, you yes. want to label somebody else and you think you know what that means. Yes. Every label is, is really like a very roomy building. Uh, it gives you a sense of your starting point and then you, you can decorate your space to reflect your individuality and your partner's personality also gets to be brought in. Your dreams, your shared dreams and values, your own separate dreams and values. Nothing matters but your and your partner's inputs. Yes, because whatever form of relationship you and your partner or partners have, it's the people in that relationship, how they feel about it that matters. And for those people 
bring them joy happy with that's all that matters no yeah. one else gets to have a say so this goes into you know releasing the need for the approval of others <clears throat> if you grew up in a Christian background but you authentically are polyamorous just being able to release that shame and that all create the healing so that you can let go of needing to have others approve of you you'll be so much more happy that is true freedom right being authentically who you are without the need for the approval of others is true freedom mm -hmm. it really mm -hmm. is and any any two polyamorous in a room can have, can have only the slightest similarities in a relationship any two yes. monogamous in a room can be very different in their experience of monogamy and so, again, this is just a starting point. It's a generality. And looking at yourself, looking at labels in regards to yourself that way and in others is, is a way healthier way to, 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 to approach it. Mm -hmm. So study the structures, study the labels to get you started when you're curious, when, you, when you've decided that you're going to do something else. So you're going to, or you're, when you're, as you're creating your intentional life, learn about the different things that are out there but then realize that you, what you're going to create is going to be unique and perfect and perfect yes so point number five sex matters keep it fun frequent and connected mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so when we see people who have grown apart and they're not having sexual intimacy in their relationship anymore there's a lot of times that one partner or the other or both will blame each other for the lack of sexual or the other partner wanting sex more than what they do and they're blaming that as the problem it's actually not the problem it's a symptom of an underlying problem in the relationship not the actual problem yes so here's another tool look at your excuses for not having sex and really go into those and fix those excuses. Never stop courting each other. So if, if you say, oh, well, I'm just always too tired. Look at that. What's the, what it is about that? What can you do to create something different? Go are to you, bed are earlier? You, yeah. <laughs> are you waiting until the very last thing in the day to, to finally have your intimacy together? What, what kind of importance does that assign to it when it's yeah. the last thing you do before you, you go to sleep? Or um, have sex in the morning instead, or whatever works. Look at, like I said, look at every excuse that you're coming up with for not having sex. Yeah, and, and, and just accept that this, it really does matter how you care, it affects your intimacy, it affects your growth together. It is not um, all optional. It's not a sideshow for your relationship. It's, and you got one partner who says, well, I just don't like sex. Look at that. Right. What are the reasons behind that? That's great. Is there a trauma there that needs to be healed? Yes. Is there shame? What is that? Look there is an opportunity to That's, learn yeah something. an opportunity to learn something and to create something new mm. and amazing and wonderful because if sex becomes transactional in a relationship the whole meaning for sexual intimacy which is a deep pleasurable exchange of energy between two people where both are giving and receiving it, it's not that anymore. Yeah, it, it, it goes flat. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Find ways to spice it up. Don't stop dating. Find ways of spicing it up. You know, if you got to create a game, like um, put a whole bunch of spicy, fun things you've wanted to try in a bowl and you pull out that paper in the morning and then you can think about all day that's going to come up for you and really start creating that juicy anticipation. Yeah. yeah. It's just, there's so many ways to make your sexual relationship fun. Too many people miss or confuse um, new relationship energy 
in uh, as they confuse that and think that that and that goes away and it always goes away when you start a new relationship you have what's called new relationship energy excitement exploration there's something new here you're being drawn to each other because here's somebody you get to learn about and get close to and then when that dies or that shifts into the longer term relationship it's time to find that it's time to get in touch with that and that's and that's just it's not lesser it's better it's actually better because we know each other's bodies right. we know what works and what doesn't work and now really start to connect yeah instead of just this really new relationship energy is exciting and fun but it's superficial real stuff that happens when you are in a long-term familiar relationship with somebody that really uh, blows the lid off yes it doesn't ever have to get old it doesn't ever have to get boring there are so many ways to just tap in and spice up your relationship and fall in love with each other over and over yes that's it that's what we got for you and we have an amazing gift for you which we have posted that link and um, it's our relationships program which is an audio program that's at six modules and we're so excited to share that with you Thank you, Freya and Michael. That was an amazing presentation. I really like all the five okay. steps to create an most authentic relationship. So, I I love um, yeah. I know you guys delivered such a great with them, and I love that you started with uh, releasing all that you are not, and mm -hmm. and it's so important for individuals to really. Be conscious that before we create anything in life, we there's the time of void and, and chaos and destruction that need to be gone. And that need we need to let go, we need to surrender, and need, we need to have, like I call it, an empty canvas uh, for love, an empty canvas for transformation. So I love that you started with that. And I believe that um, why don't you start with releasing who you are not, like the, the part of you that is not actually you, just like all those conditionings, is the, all the four steps that you share, it becomes easier. You yes. you kind of like agree yes. with that? Like, this is like yes, yes. the core of the work that we I do. Think, like, yeah. if we don't believe yeah, that. It's the core. It is the core to showing up authentically mm -hmm. in a relationship. Yeah. Absolutely. Who so wants to deal with it you're not? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. If somebody's so, in a relationship with you, they want to know who you are. Yeah. So let's talk about, you know, I love that you bring this up because it's, we were talking about vulnerability. Um, and, and, you know, it's like, how far you guys go with vulnerability? Like, what is your insight on vulnerability? Like, because I'm a kind of person that I'm like, I'm like, I'm a walking body embodiment of, you know, vulnerability. I like, and I don't let uh, other people uh, take advantage of that because once I'm so open and I recognize all aspects of myself, there's no pain, pain is illusion. There's no, nobody can harm me anyway because I own it. I own all the stuff about myself. I own all my, my struggle, my story, my histories. I own my shadows, my all of that stuff, all of the aspect of myself. So I don't give permission to anybody to just come and be like, you know, trying anything because I love all myself. So it's like become vulnerable. So what is your insight and vulnerability when you you talking about this aspect of like, you know, people have to know who you are. Some people are afraid to really show up their authentic way because. They just feel like they're not going to be loved or accepted or they, they're going to be feel vulnerable and they just don't want to be vulnerable. Yeah, and what what I feel about vulnerability is actually it's essential to a relationship. And um, true vulnerability is allowing that person to see those parts of you that you're afraid they might not like. And 
when we actually show up as who we truly are, we often get surprised that actually that other person might feel like that's some of the most beautiful parts of us. Yes. Yes. And so being vulnerable is absolutely strong. It's strength. It really is strength. It's not it is weakness. not weakness. Yeah. It is strength. Or in it. And, uh, yeah. And there's so much, um, the rewards are, on it are so great in a, in, a, in a relationship. That's when healing occurs. Mm -hmm. You share those parts of yourself that you thought were your shadow. Then you can integrate them. Then they are seen and they become beautiful. Yeah, everybody goes through life thinking that they're the only ones with a shadow. Yeah. <laughs> right? You know, we, we all have the, we all have this shadow, and uh, we all have um, we all have our challenge our challenges, and uh, we all think that we're, when we open up and people can see and see how authentic that is, how and they identify with it because they mm -hmm. see it in themselves too. There's a crystal I was just thinking of. I've got this beautiful fluorite crystal egg, and it has all these little cracks and imperfections and inclusions in it up to the light there are beautiful reflections and rainbows that are created by those what you would think are imperfections but they actually add to the beauty of the whole picture so when we hide parts of ourselves and we refuse to be vulnerable we put walls between us and that other person and we're not allowing them to really see all of ourselves. Hmm. I'm just soaking it in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love, I love, um, I love, and, and yeah, the shadow. I mean, I love a lot of myself that I'm always a kind of person that encouraged, you know, myself and I inspire others to to be courageous, to embrace the shadow, to embrace that part of themselves that it is not on the light, but it's like it's it also is it's, it has love and it is it's, you know it's 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 part of us. It's, it's like unconditional love and they have to show us something. I don't know. I have such a great I have such a great relationship with my shadow that it's like people sometimes they just like. I don't know, whatever they think, they think, whatever, but it's just, I just love my shadow. It's like I have no problem with it, and I embrace all yeah. that. <laughs> and, and it's interesting. And we find out that, that it's the key to our strength, yes. too. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's that which allows us to have greater empathy for others, to connect with others as authentically as a human being and as a, as a spiritual being. When we, when we are in touch with it in ourselves, and, and, we are, and then when we are vulnerable, to those who love us and those that we're, in, that we're in an intimate relationship with, it becomes our strength. Yes. And sometimes when we're willing to be vulnerable, then someone is going to see that and hear that, and it's going to give them the courage to actually be who they are as well and to accept that part of them. Yeah, it's a ripple, ripple effect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is like well, that's why I say like in, when we run a women's circles and retreat, if if we go with vulnerability, that's the first thing that we work on because it, if you don't open up and allow yourself to see yourself for who you truly are, then like the good and you know good or bad, whatever contrast you want to call it, but in your the things that you made the, you think that you don't like about yourself, but the more you, the more you have a greater relationship with that part of you that at one point you thought you didn't like it. You kind of honor, respect, and love it, and embrace it, and also have, a, you know, you 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 co-create together, and you know which part of yourself is going to actually be leading the. I call it the the bot metaphor. You know, I'm the one driving the bus, and my higher self, you know, the part of me that wants to be the courageous, the fun, the central. The wise, you know, the white priestess and all that. She's lying in the bus all the time. And sometimes when I have my little witchy witch, the the one that want to create immature stuff and a little chaos and play, you know, stuff. Sometimes she gets on the bus sometimes, but 
I know, I don't let her go all the way. You know, like maybe she drive a, a block or two, <laughs> now a whole mile. But um, but yeah, it's so it's so important to to embrace that. Another thing that I love that you mentioned is uh, being a now. Be as being a now. You know, when you're releasing all this stuff that is now you, at the same time, that first um, uh, step was beautiful how you guys put it together because and even like the wordings and why it was bigger it was you know release out the, the, what is now you and now and and that kind of like sent sent me like um a subconscious message right like yeah release it all that stuff that is now you and at the same time give yourself permission to be in the now right yeah absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. That's so good. So good. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I was like, I was getting all the, the, the insight and energy from you guys. Uh, um, boundaries. I know that you guys talk about it, and I love it. Uh, we don't have boundaries. Uh, we don't have a sacred container for our creation. Like we're yeah. talking in one, of, in one of other. Um, episodes for this summit uh, with one of the other speakers we were talking about like our life is like a garden you know a garden so if a garden has you know a boundaries to have structure mother nature have structure and boundaries and, and a cycle of creation and destruction and chaos and void right and if we don't have those boundaries we can't feel that structure of nature and the freedom that happen within it Yes. So, so important to have great boundaries. I know you guys talk about the aspect of um, uh, polyamorous and monogamous. Um, what do you feel it is the most important boundary to have in as a monogamous or as a polyamorous? to really feel My, for me that's trust and to have trust that person has to be an in integrity uh, if i can't trust that person to be honest if i can't trust that person to say hey i need to maybe have another relationship in my life I feel like I need more rather than going out and just taking more and not using precautions to protect me and my health. If I can't trust that person, that's a hard boundary for me. Trust and integrity, that's that's yeah. that's huge for me. It really is. And and the, the thing about boundaries is they, they fit right in with, with uh, vulnerability. Yeah. But they keep you safe. Well, the difference between boundaries and walls, walls keep you, they, they shut down in both directions. Mm -hmm. they can't, you can't be seen by others and you can't really connect with others if you have a wall. If you have a boundary that's per, that, that allows energy flow in a safe manner back and forth, but it blocks out unsafe, unsafe energy flow, it blocks out unsafe situations so that a person can be vulnerable and safe at the same time. So yes. it's essential, boundaries are essential to a, to a healthy relationship, a, a, a deep, uh, intimate relationship, connection, connection. Yes. And how can people uh, become more aware of the boundaries? Because, for example, I, you know, now I teach uh, how to create that and, and based it on self-love and your values and your principles and your standards mm -hmm. and what is important in your life that's how you start creating the boundaries that um that, that you want to in a relationship not just with yourself but with everybody you your clients your co-workers and everybody around to me that's For tap into your body tap into your body mm -hmm. how does something make you feel you know how it feels to be lied to. That's uncomfortable. You don't want to be in a situation where you're feeling, where your body is feeling that way. So if someone treats you in a certain manner and it brings up that feeling in your body, that feeling that something's not right, 
that's a boundary. Get in alignment with your body, what your inner knowing is telling you, and create that healthy boundary. Someone's treating you disrespectfully. That brings up a feeling in your body that's not comfortable. Listen and honor your body. And then the second part of that is to, is to start practicing. Start, start feeling what that feels like when you do it in a social situation, when you do it at a bank, when you do it in situations that are easier to do it than in, in an intimate relationship. And you'll, if you're not used to doing that, it's a real mm -hmm. it's an awakening. You, you start to feel like, I do deserve that boundary. I do deserve yeah. respect. And the more we initiate these boundaries and the more we hold them, in place and honor ourselves, the easier and easier it becomes to hold those healthy boundaries and even set more boundaries that you know we haven't maybe noticed before. But tapping into your body, feeling how that feels, you know, when your body feels that uneasy feeling where something's not right, you're not being respectfully treated, you're being lied to, those things. Really trust your body and then set the boundary. You maintain it. Yeah. I maintain it, yes. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. boy, uh, when you first start setting it, it'll be a battle. Yeah. But, but Your ego will come up. <laughs> other people who don't like these new boundaries. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and it's how you maintain your sense of self. If some people think that real love has no boundaries. That's not true. You know, real love is is connection between two individual people, two people who have boundaries, who have, like you said, gardens. Yeah. They're gardens that they, t they take care of and they maintain and they grow. They don't merge it into another garden to where it becomes, um, where they lose track of that. And so many people that we work with have lost, completely lost sight of who they are. Yeah. They don't know what they are. Yeah. What, you don't want. allow weeds to grow in your garden either. Yeah. yeah. So... <laughs> And so you do that by the boundaries. And the beautiful part that you mentioned about the weed is like even Mother Nature actually have boundaries when it comes to vegetation because you know you guys are in Costa Rica, right? Mm -hmm. I'm from Ecuador. So when I traveled to Ecuador and since I was little I traveled to the Amazon and the jungles all the time. And it is just beautiful to see that maybe it may look from the outside, it may look like there's there were no boundaries of like what is you know yeah. What is like the weed, what is not. But it's like when you start getting deeper into the ecosystem in there, you start realizing that even Mother Nature create another layer yes. of something to stop the propagation of something that it doesn't belong there. Yes, absolutely. Well, actually, um, I've studied a little bit on permaculture. And one of permaculture's um, key tenets is that boundaries are where the action is. That's where the greatest productivity in a garden or in, a, in a, any kind of a natural system is at the boundary. Mm -hmm. And so if the seashore, for instance, is just teeming with life, if you go in the deep sea, you don't find as much life. And, and you go into the desert that's on the, sea, that's on the other side of the seashore, you may have no life. But at yeah. the seashore, it'll be teeming with life. It's always the boundaries where, where, where things happen. Yeah. That's and just like too. when you have the deep jungle, you have these huge, huge trees, but there's not much other plant life down below because the plants need the sunlight to grow, and the huge trees block out that sunlight. So you've got to have uh, an environment where you can grow. And, and that happens at the boundaries. You know, people will argue that you know you accept me the way I am. If you you know, how can you say you love me? I'm Conditionally, if you've got this boundary, no, you can have unconditional love and very firm boundaries. Yes. 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 And yes. so you can love someone unconditionally and say, yes, I love you the way you are. You have the right to be that way and not with me. <laughs> you yeah, one of my, way. yeah, one of, uh, of my uh, 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 trainings. One of my mentors, Francesca Gentile, like we were discussing the aspect of unconditional love and, you know, in a relationship. And 
and now uh, because I have one of my my clients asking me that question, like, what is the difference? And I was like, I had to go into my two day meditation and and then confirm with my other mentors, right? And it was like the beautiful when she said it, like very simple, it's like we all have unconditional love, we all are unconditional love. But our relationship itself is conditional because we have boundaries. Like we have yes. things that we allow and we don't allow. So people confuse that being in a relationship um, and being in conditional love means that you're gonna accept crap and shit into it. And it's like, no, yeah. it is my sacred space yes. and exactly. you know, creation yes. that yes. has conditions. Yeah, the relationship has conditions. Not my love for you, my love for you is infinite, but my relationship, the way how I treat myself and how mm -hmm. I invite you to treat me and I welcome your treatment <laughs> is, is, yeah, that I have control over it. I'm, like, I'm yeah. in my power for that. So. And because you have that rich, sacred space, you have so much more to offer. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah, and, and in my work in the past couple of years, um, the more I tap into creating that beautiful, sacred space of work, even with client, uh, with somatic work, when, then, when I have that boundary set up front, up front, like, and I can feel it in a core, the alignment within myself, yes, that that it feels so safe. My the the sacredness opens up so much that there's more healing to happen. That if I come from a place of uh, creating something. Uh, in a relationship, and then all of a sudden, you just don't feel good, like you said, right, Freya? Like, not feeling in your body. I just don't feel good. My belly feels like, ah. Like, my, mm -hmm. my chest feels like, ah. And my shoulders can feel like this. And I'm like, when I start feeling that, you know, I, it's, yeah, that's not the place to, you don't, when we start feeling like this, that's the worst place to create anything that we want in our life. We want yeah, to create from a place like, oh, yes, this is me. This is all of it, right? Yeah, exactly. It lets you stand in a place of power, and you approach the relationship no longer from a place of need because you don't need anything. You've got your secure boundaries. You've got your garden. You don't need anything. You want it. You want that person to be with you. You want to have the growth that you're going to have together. You want to give to them and to receive from them. And a relationship that says, I need you, that's a terrible burden to put on another person. Mm -hmm. You need air. Yes. You need food. You know, to, to, to demand another person to put them in the same space as air and food, that doesn't let them be a person. That doesn't let them be an independent, rich, um, beautiful person. That, that makes them your food. It's like you're feeding mm -hmm. off of them. Yeah. Every relationship should start from a place of, I don't need you. I, I want choose you. you. I choose you. I choose you. Yes, thank you. I love it. Should you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, we can talk forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I really, really appreciate you guys so much. And I really appreciate appreciate the work that you guys do. I really appreciate what you do. People. Yeah, this is awesome that you put you. this together. Thank you. Yes, I'm excited. So, I'm excited. I'm excited. So thank you again, Freya and uh, Michael, for joining us into the summit. summit. Um, I'm like, I'm feeling so good right now. There's like, I just want to soak into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I love you. I love you guys so much. Thank love you for joining us. love you too. And... Um, Thank you for joining us today in this amazing episode with uh, Freya and Michael. We appreciate you and hope that you had amazing insight and even breakthroughs in this time that we spent together. Yeah. So we see you in our next episode. Have a great, fantastic, amazing day. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. <laughs>